Isu Odinson was the last born and youngest of all of Odin's sons. But the seer of the Waluspa says little of his deeds in Ragnarok. She speaks only this verse. The great god shall govern all, will come down to the doom of the world. He sits in judgment, settles all feuds, and lays down laws that shall last forever. Nothing more. Perhaps it is little wonder. That seer was born before Isu's time, and Isu was not born in the halls of Asgard, but to a mortal woman far to the south. It is instead from Yanni Resen, Isu's youngest thane and his kinsman, that we know of Isu's deeds at Ragnarok. For Yanni too was a seer. And when the king of Rome exiled him to an island in the great sea, this is what he saw. Yanni saw Heimdall blow Giala horn and summon all the gods to war. And Isu armed himself with his sword, crossbeam, and seven great mind runes. He wore a white tunic, a shining belt, and a crown like the king of Rome. And he rode to war on a white stallion. Then Isu broke the first vine through and summoned all the worthy warriors who had died untimely of disease. They rode forth on white horses, bearing bows, and spread like a plague among the giants. Then Isu broke the second vine room and summoned all the worthy warriors from Walhalm who had died in war. They rode forth on red horses, bearing swords and axes, and they brought battle with them. Then Isu broke the third bind room and summoned all the worthy warriors who had died untimely, sailing and trading. They rode forth on black horses, bearing round shields, and made the giants pay dearly. Then Isu broke the fourth bind room and summoned Hell's Thane Death, whom he had defeated in battle and bound with oaths. And Death too bore a sword and rode forth on a green horse, and he said, Son of Odin, why have you summoned me? Fulfill your oath, said Isu, and fight this day beside me. I will not, said Death, and struck him. Their battle was fierce, and nothing came of it for three hours. And in the first hour, the Allfather fell to Fenrir the wolf, for Isu could not aid him. And in the second hour, Thor struck down Jormungand the world serpent, and staggered nine steps to fall dead at Isu's feet. But in the third hour, Isu struck down death with crossbeam for once and all, and then stooped and took Mjolnir from Thor's cold hand. Magni Thorson stopped battle and said, Uncle, would you steal my inheritance? Isu told him, Your father granted me the loan of Mjolnir for this night. And Magni honored that oath. Then Isu broke the fifth bind room and summoned all the worthy warriors from the Hall of Tyr who had died unjustly. They rode forth on gray horses bearing spears and wrought vengeance. Then Yanni the seer saw skulls swallow the sun and the moon shone like blood and all the stars fell. Yet the battle raged with no gain to either side. And then Isu broke the sixth bind room. And the earth shook to its foundations and shattered Loki's chains. Why have you summoned me, said Loki? For I did not murder Baldur Odinson, and you who have the gift of foresight know it. Why release me now to wreak my vengeance on the gods? 
Choose as you will, uncle, said Isuit. But you shall find no war joy today. Your kin bleed on all sides. Loki fell silent, then asked, My children, do they yet live? Isu told him, Sleipnir lies dead beneath the Allfather, whom your whelp Fenrir slew, but Vithar cut his triumph short. Jormungand strove with Thor, and both have fallen. Hell alone lives, and she fights beside the giants. Loki considered this for some time. Finally, he said, I must not abandon my only daughter. And I name her heir to all I hold in Jotunheim. But you, Isu, I name you my heir to all that I hold in Asgard, so that whatever befalls my line will not die. And Isu swore to see it done. Then Yanni saw Loki sail forth on Nilefar, the nail ship, with all Hell's thanes with him. Hell herself rode to battle on Nifhog, the red dragon. And she was clothed in scarlet like a bride and adorned with jewels, and the gown hid her corpse limbs. Then Yanni saw Moira, Isu's mother, ride forth to battle with the Valkyries. And she was clad in armor as white as the moon and shining like the sun. And she slew that dragon while Isu dueled hell. Then Yanni saw Search burn the blood field and the world tree withered and all Midgard died with it. Heimdall and Loki dueled among the flames and both perished. But Isu turned back the flames with a rune and then took Hel's sword. Submit, said Isu, and be spared. Kill me then, said Hel. What have I to live for, who am half dead already? Isu did not answer, but took his sword crossbeam and laid the blade flat against the charred husk of the world tree and spoke three powerful runes. And Yanni saw Isdrago grow green with leaves and white with blossoms, and all Midgard was restored. And Isu said again, Submit and be renewed. And Hell stared at the world tree. I submit, she said. And Isu laid the flap of crossbeam on her head and spoke again those three powerful runes. And her limbs grew hale and hardy and whole and she was as fair as any bride in Asgard. And Isu gave her back his, her sword, and she fought beside him with honor. And yet the battle raged on till the end of the day, though there was no sun to set, no stars to rise. And well into the night, till it was almost day, and when there was no hope left, Isu broke the seventh bind room, and the giants fell, and the battle ceased, and all was silent in all the realms for a half an hour. Then Isu took the hammer Mjolnir in his hand and raised the walls of Helheim to the ground, freeing Baldur and Hother, his brothers, and all the dead. Then he gave back the hammer to his nephews Magni and Mothi, and took up instead the hammer 
of his foster father, Yosef the Shipwright, the greatest craftsman who ever was a mortal on Midgar. And he rose, he, he raised the hammer in one hand and crossbeam in the other and spoke three powerful runes. And Yanni saw Gimle, the gem adorned hall, rise like a home for gods and men. But Yanni does not call it Gimli, but New Frithergard after the city in Isu's homeland. And then, as the seer says, so too says Yanni. Isu shall hold a great thing and sit in judgment and settle all feuds. For he has such wisdom, such learning, such knowledge of the law that no other judge in Midgard could equal him and after Ragnarok, none in Asgard either. And at this thing, all shall receive their inheritance. Baldur shall wed Hel, and Isu shall be chosen king. And he will reign over gods and men, living and dead, for the next age. <laughs>